All right, how do I mount these solar panels? I have kind of ideas about nesting solar panels so you can take the front one and slide it over the next one and slide it all so you can like retract the roof or slide it back out. But I think that's more complicated than it's the benefits will be worth. I should probably just hard mount the whole thing and make it so the whole thing can come out or back. I don't know. Let me think. So it's like seven bananas this way and ten bananas that way. Oh, nice swing. Is that just a big knot on the bottom that you sit on? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Right, the long way is ten bananas. That goes right up to there. I think that's too wide. That sticks out too far. Like if I pull the pontoons in, they'll overhang by a bunch, like a banana or two on each side. So the skinny way would be like that. Yeah, I think I gotta do the skinny way that way and the long way that way. All right, that's about even with the back of the boat. And this is four panels the long way. Goes all the way up to here. And, well, the front of the boat is uh, up there. So it comes to like a meter and a half from the front. I guess that's not terrible. Everyone in here would be shaded for sure. Now, I just got this pile of scrap aluminum aluminum. I've been considering using it to make the solar panel holders. What if I took the rear one, put it long ways, put two in the middle wide, and then the front one long? Then that would bring them in toward the middle a little bit, and the wider ones would just be where the pontoons are. I'm going to have to do some drawings. One of the points of making this boat is that I want to be able to take it to town. And I want to be able to take it to town without it being wrecked, you know, by careless other people. Because people are not always careful with their boats or other people's boats around them. Particularly in cities. <sighs> oh, that's a good looking boat. I'm surfacing my fiberglass here with paper just because it makes a nice surface and I wanted to smooth it out a little so the fiber or the solar panels can stick. Oh, waiting for wax to dry. All right, let's do something else while that's waiting. This is the motor propeller shaft housing and this tube goes all the way out to the back and it looks like it's 66 royal noodle units long if I make the shaft six foot two which is a tiny bit taller than me then uh, it leaves me enough sticking out here to attach a propeller and 
I'll probably end up trimming a bit, but just in case I need to get more at the other end, I'll leave a little extra. Yeah, so basically I need one of that here. One concern I do have with this, this is a pretty long, let's see if I can get the camera in there. It's a pretty long tube to put a steel shaft through and hope it doesn't hit the edge and slowly wear through the sides. This tube comes up inside to just under this hatch. I love how this hatch came out. Ooh, that's gorgeous. So if this tube, you know, gets a hole worn through it somewhere in here, it'll flood, you know, the, the back part of the boat, which is not ideal, obviously. This one, I put a bearing right in the middle. So there's a bearing here in the middle and up by the pedals. Uh, this one will have more power running through it. So, you know, I have the pair, I have a bearing down here that'll have water running through it, so it'll keep it cool. But can I put a bearing up in the middle, like a plastic bearing? Because I'm not going to find a, a stainless steel one that'll fit in there. straight piece of tubing. You know, maybe it'll be all right going through there without hitting the edge. To, to hit the edge of the inside of the tube in there, oh, it needs to deflect about uh, like half a centimeter. It seems like it's pretty hard to get it to bend that far. Maybe I'm just making up a problem that won't happen. Hope not. I do have a piece of copper pipe that fits on that. Oh, it looks like someone beat it up. I got this uh, scrap. I should be able to straighten it back out. Now if I can smash this through there, I should get these lumps out. Or I could smash this in there and have it totally stuck. Oh. oh, look at that. Beauty. I think I might want to do that. So it'll just be an extra bit of safety before anything gets wrecked. I don't know, I want to make this so it can kind of spin freely inside the tube, or do I want to put some like foam material so I can slide this in and it locks into the tube so it's always spinning. If I just put a thin bit of like some kind of rubber around this, then it could just spin with this tube and it would only be, you know, engaged if this actually bump, bumps the edge. Who knows, maybe I'll get this in there and it seem like it won't hit the edge at all. But I'm going to keep this out. Alright, here's the end of a motor. This tube fits on there. Just have to make a thin sleeve in there. Good thing I have a lathe now. This is going to have a fair amount of force pushing that way. So when the propeller shaft is on there, you know, the propellers at that end, just all the force is going into this. And I don't want to just rely on the bearings in the motor to take all that. So I'm thinking I'll put a bearing here 
just rest the outside ring right against the housing. Then I can take my propeller shaft tube, put it there, and put something on here that'll rest against the bearing here. So when the propeller shaft is trying to push down, it'll push against this bearing, which will just push into the housing, which will be able to handle lots of force right here.